Okay, scenario one is two boats approaching the leeward mark. They both want to go, or leeward gate, they both want to go around this left hand gate looking downwind. Um, yellow is wanting to retain his advantage over blue. Question is, what's the uh, right way for the yellow for yellow to approach the mark? And really, I guess I'm asking tight or wide or what, and what allows him to, you know, what rules uh, come uh, yellow, into Yellow is allowed. Well. So section C rules do not apply at the starting mark surrounded by navigable water or in anchor line. That's not this. Rule 18 applies between boats when they are required to leave a mark on the same side and at least one of them is in the zone. Yeah. It does not apply between boats on opposite tacks on a beat to windward. Yeah. Between opposite bo boats on opposite tacks when proper course at the mark is for one but not both of them to tack, which is what's going on here. So you do have some advantage because attack and a jibe are defined as the same thing. You have a room, you, right. You Say that again, tack. read that again, when it does... Does, does, not apply. does not apply between boats on opposite <coughs> tacks when the proper course at the mark for one but not both of them is to tack, which is the case here. Okay, so does that tell me then that that I can go wider. I can go a little wider? Yep. I can, I, I've always thought that. Yep. I've read that. That's what I said. Yep, absolutely. Well, so, so my point yeah, is that before if you were, or before or after the jibe, before the jibe, before the jibe, while you're on starboard. Yep. Right. So you still have the right of way. Rule 18, the buoy room doesn't apply. Okay. Right. Right. Well, while, while you're on opposite tacks, right. As soon as you jibe, then that now you have turned on rule 18. Okay, I agree with that. So, you okay. if you were yellow and you wanted to uh, avoid this guy rounding right on your transom, or avoid having <coughs> just a, a really tight, slow rounding here, take him up. I would yeah, head up a up. little bit. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do my jibe and then round. You just get to sail so where you, you want you to. You tight to the mark on going tight upwind. Tight to the mark going upwind. Right. Is yeah, that what you remember, Steve? Everybody agree with that? Yeah, yeah we've we've done done that's the way I've seen it happen. That's the way he did it, yeah. Times. And I yeah would, the other <laughs> issue, though, is if you're coming down like this and you're going too far, this guy is gonna, probably going to have to jive or he's going to slow down so much yes. that that's, yeah. you'll have clear. Mm -hmm. uh, access at the mark anyway. Mm -hmm. So, um, you're going to get some yelling from this guy, I think, for sure. Mm -hmm. You go too wide. As blue, you want to slow down. Right? Yeah, you don't yeah, want a pinwheel. You want yeah, to slow down. Right, but I don't know that you want to slow down out here. You might want to slow down and go wide, too. You right. Know, or, or try to come up I mean, if, if this yellow boat... So, K, K, case 75, the abstract is, when Rule 18 applies, the rules of section A and B apply as well. When an inside overlapped right-of-way boat, which yellow is, inside, mm -hmm. overlapped, and, and right-of-way right because she's on starboard. Right. Uh, when an inside overlapped right-of-way boat must jive at the mark, she's entitled to sail her proper course until she jives. And her proper course... I think is, is, is wide. Wide, wide. wide and tight. Correct. Yep. Correct. That's proper course. That's proper course. If okay. a starboard tack boat that changes course does not break rule 16.1, so if she turns up, does not break the prohibition on changing course, if she gives the port tack boat ad adequate space to keep clear, <coughs> and the por port tack boat fails to take advantage of it promptly. Yeah. So if we are here and she, starboard turns here, immediate promptly, blue must respond. Correct. You can't get to here and say, I don't have any space. Yeah. Because blue didn't yeah. take well, the advantage yeah, the big promptly. debate we had is... No, another corollary. Let's reverse it. Now, this guy's on starboard. But, you know, as they enter, ah. they're overlapped. Yeah. Now, this guy's got to give him room. <clears throat> Up to the point he's in the zone. Wait, wait. Once, once he, my understanding is that once he enters the zone, he, this guy has to start thinking about giving that guy room. 
No, he still has a right I mean, to go I mean, the mark. But I mean, I'm sorry, the other way around. This, this, the other way around. Yellow this guy has, has to think about giving correct. that guy room. Correct, yeah, that's right. correct. So yeah, this, this boat does problem. have right away until they jibe. Yeah. So he's not thinking about room yet. So, but right. what, once what he does jibe, from just going by the lee so, like this. Well, because well, this guy should once jibe. He does, once he does jibe, this boat is yes, owes him mark room. Is, yes. And if you wait too long, you're unable to give it. Right. The way I've always you, thought of it is, if we're out here, I mean, I can be, I can be yelling at this guy that I'm going to need room, I'm going to need room, and but he, um, the better he should answer, probably jibe. Yes. Better he answer jibes. is to jibe. Yes. Now he's the right-of-way boat. Right. Yeah. Now he can push, push it up to get, get room yeah. as they enter. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, that depends on the wind velocities of what's practical, too. Yeah. Well, and other boats and right. everything else. <laughs> <laughs> and if there's other boats. Yeah, that, that complicates the scenario, doesn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Well, if you're stacked up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we'll have some more scenarios with other boats in here. Any, uh, any other things on this? So you have blue and yellow approaching the mark. Both <clears> Both boats want around this gate, the left gate. Uh, there's a potential, if not an actual, overlap right here. And uh, the question is, can blue break that overlap, avoid having to give mark room to yellow? So who wants to do first? Can it, can't I just go like this? You can. Yes. You'll slow it down though. Yeah. Huh. Well, You're yeah. close. You're just a right. boat length away. You're really close. And I'd point my transom away from yellow and yeah. and see if I can. But you're right; it's a judgment call. Mm -hmm. If I can sail the lee like this, and I can cut yeah. in like this, and then yeah. true my course, then great. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Any other you really yellow have, have to, to know. Go, yellow has to go behind that transom and be on the outside. Right. What's the wind velocity on this one? I have. Uh, I didn't put one because no, I didn't know what was. Okay, so one of the th one of the challenges for blue is that 18.2e says if there is reasonable doubt that a boat has obtained or broken overlap in time, it shall be presumed she did not. Mm -hmm. So if blue turns down as we, we sail no together, right, and this is close, yeah, then the rules presume that that overlap was not broken. Yeah. You, right, you have to talk to the other boat. <coughs> so if I'm if I'm this boat and I make my turn or my jibe. Either way, as soon as I believe the overlap is broken, I will say overlap broken, right. and I'll need room. I'll need room. <clears throat> and if there isn't a pushback mm -hmm. that the overlap is broken, that changes the burden of proof. Because now we've established between us there's no overlap. If you didn't argue back, and now that 18.2e says it's presumed that that overlap didn't wasn't established when we reached the zone. Okay. Now, when we started the scenario, the blue was on a starboard tack. Yep. So I jibed, and depending and on then, the boat, then you're up on windward boat, cleaving clear up until the zone. Well, yeah. you are, but yeah. but you've you also are. broken the overlay. Depends on the boat you're sailing. If you're sailing a small boat like an Opti or a Laser, or if you were very aggressive in your jibe in an MC or a C boat, you can get a little boost. For, you can at least right. break and even as you make even. your turn. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> The key is <coughs> broke for, broken the overlap because that presumption in 18.2e is very important. So you know, hail, listen to, for a response or a lack of a response. Yep. And but then also and don't push it if they argued back. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now another approach to this um, might be. Wouldn't the strategy be then to argue back? Yeah. As yellow. Right. If you're or yellow, yellow then you would just say, no, no, you didn't break it. No, no, but the, likely, but the good news is that we're gentlemen. And we're generally right. fairly honest with one another. Likely, the yellow boat is saying, "I have an overlap." Yep. Yeah. So as as we're, as, we're, as we're here, I have an overlap. I have an overlap. I have an overlap. You know, we're trying to talk about that presumption at the zone. So if yellow's just quiet, like most of the sailors I sail with, just don't they don't say anything. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Until, until they're in the crunch, until, and then they'll the shout view. like crazy. Yeah. So important point. If my rudder is hanging off the back, is my overlap here? What's the rudder? Or 
the back of the rotor. Is it green or blue? It's green. It's all it is green. Parts of your hull. Yeah, down in the water. <laughs> <laughs> and it depends on the boat, but you know, some boats have long rudders. When the early sea boats did, we had that big uh, teardrop. Uh, yep, X boats still have a fairly large teardrop. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. And his knees are pretty good. So another approach to this might be, if we're farther, let's say we're just a little farther back. Go up when? If this guy's good enough, it's also probably not so bad to trim in. Right, exactly. Go and get across. And get across. That's, that's, and get across. That's, that's, you can. Yeah. However, right, that's t on your diagram, that's tough. Because you're you're going to be doing this. Yeah, your diagram showed overlapped already. Correct. So you're just going to make it so, worse. So the point is, you need to back this up. And the qu the qu <laughs> fundamental question is, did this start like this, or did this start like this when you pulled ahead? Right. But I I was actually kind of when I was thinking about the scenario, I was thinking there wasn't quite an overlap okay. here, and you just wanted to make sure you didn't get one. So the play in that case is to trim in. And get to where he can't mm -hmm. overlap you right. unless he aggressively jives and heads up. Now, what so happens if he runs, in the, right. runs up close to your transom? <clears throat> He's over your rudder, but. <laughs> well, it, so let's just ask this question. We have a starboard boat and a port boat, and this boat runs into this boat. Who's right and who's wrong? Port boat's, port wrong. boat's wrong. Port boat's port wrong. Port boat's wrong. wrong, that's correct. Yeah. So you need to make sure you can clear ahead. Yep. Yeah, I, I actually think that uh, this this works pretty well because you can, you know, if there's any wind at all, you can go fairly fast. And you get control. And get control. Right. Yep. Okay. All righty. Any others for that? The scenario is that blue and the yellow are still fairly, fairly okay. far from the circle. Right. And they're approximately even. And the question is, is it realistic for blue to try to get mark room on yellow for rounding the left gate. You know, I think they can try, blue could try by going on port, sheeting up, get better speed, go behind yellow, and then hold the overlap okay. and then jibe and... Uh, yeah, I mean, so is that, has anybody got experience you, with making that work? You want to do this? It depends yeah. about who's sailing yellow. Yeah. <laughs> That's yep. the idea. So. If, 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 uh, so, so the idea is you jibe, you come in, you have a bunch of speed going, mm -hmm. and you go dead down when no, carrying that extra overlap. speed with an overlap right. as you get to the zone. No. You have that presumption, so you need to carry that as you get the first boat gets to the zone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, how do you defend? And, no, you're show, no and you're showing, there. and you're showing yourself being in tights. So you're also uh, blanketing their air. Yeah, so you're, yellow, you're limiting their ability in, to yeah. yellow have was, the breeze. Yellow, yellow would let blue do that. Yeah, yellow yeah so how does, jibe, how does yellow defend? To jibe and uh, go in the same direction. And, yeah. So if you're, if you're yellow and you're approaching like this, you need to be very conscious of what blue is doing. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. So the way, if, if blue starts to jibe, you need to jibe <clears throat> along. Mm -hmm. If you jibe along, in every boat with a centerboard or a dagger or a dagger board or a lee board, you want to jibe on a full board here, hmm. because blue's going to jibe on a full board. And if you're uh, if you're sliding, mm -hmm. well, blue has yeah, a full board. Yeah. Blue can carry that speed, and you're going to go sideways and lose all your momentum. Yeah. So you need to be very very aware of this boat outside of you for the aggressive move of full board down, jibe, because even if you jibe and you're partial board and blues full board, you're going to lose that speed battle because you're going to be cavitating going sideways. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent point. <clears throat> now the question is, a lot of guys don't try to, they just accept that position that they're in. And I've always wondered if we shouldn't be more aggressive and, and try things like, like this maneuver that John just showed us. Because you can, you can, you've picked up a boat if you do that. Yeah, I think it all depends upon who's skipper and yellow. Yeah, if he's skillful, yeah, they probably don't try it. And and how close the traffic behind you is, because you can go and do this little screwing around with each yeah, other. We're assuming there's freedom of movement. I, and all put yourself in a bad spot I, with people behind you, and then. Yeah. And 
you know, the psychology of this, if you're yellow and you'd like to discourage this behavior in the future, you might decide if you're yellow that we're just going to sail up here for a little while and make this hurt because you tried it. <laughs> and I'm going to give up a couple boats. You know, it, far be it from somebody to play those psychological games. Well, I think there's a couple out here that but try that. <laughs> but God, as I've seen a couple of guys that yeah, have done but, that. Yeah, I mean, especially if you're way it's, out front. It's stupid, but it... Uh, well, if you're way out, if you're, you're first and second, or you have no chance of catching the pack in front of you, and you've got some yeah, gap behind you. Yeah, then you can play the game. Yeah. You know, there's, there's some risk there if you're blue that... This person might say, "To hell with you." But it, true, true to the Dreheim video where the, he's talking about how doing things like this, basically you're just screwing with each other. Mm -hmm. If if you can't do a clean one of those, you're better off not screwing with each other because you're basically just wasting uh, so, distance. So to the, the other piece of defense here is as you overlap, it doesn't take much of a push up once you're overlapped. That you can turn down as you approach the zone, and your corner of your transom is blocking, blocking the ability you turning, you know, right. of this mm -hmm. boat to turn down. Mm -hmm. So and then you break the overlap. As soon, well, it, it, there's it, an overlap now. There's an overlap now, but as you turn down, if you're blocking him while you turn, mm -hmm. naturally, as he turns down, you're going to extend that gap. Yeah. So you know the geometry of your boat is important, and it does, <clears> you know <throat> you might give up a half a boat length versus the boat mm -hmm. in front of you. Mm -hmm. But that's way more valuable than losing the two boat lengths of being to the outside. And your trick there, I mean, the trick there is to come up slowly and get it close because that gives you that geometry advantage. Right. If he keeps enough gap as you turn down, then it's more likely to keep the overlap. He'll turn down the wind. Yeah. So the, the Dreheim scenario was that you're both coming down wind like this. This boat gets a nice breeze and starts to come on him fast. So do you ride over top and do this? And his argument is, you don't. You give him room to still have good air because otherwise this guy may just ride you up like you were describing. And now you're giving an opportunity for other boats yep. to get in here. So you're better off just kind of giving enough air that this boat doesn't feel threatened. Yep. And so they keep sailing a more yep. normal it, course. Exactly. And it's... Yeah, that risk of going high and getting left is absolutely there. Mm -hmm. And many, many sailors will say, you know, for that psychological advantage of you're not going to do this next time, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, it's playing the long game of I'm not going to, don't go above me, don't go above me, don't go above me. Okay, you went above me, we're, sit, we're going high. Yeah. So the idea here was I wanted a six mile an hour. What I'm worried about in this scenario, and I think we've all been in the uh, case where you're one of these guys, especially one of these guys, and you've got all these boats behind you sucking your wind. Correct. And you're going slow, and it's agonizing because you, you want to get to that mark and you see these guys coming up behind you. And the question is, uh, what can you do to avoid the slows here? And uh, so the, the way I wrote it, neither, neither side of the course appears favored currently. Which color? The first question is which colored boat, in other words, these first four, is in the best position to gain? But but this mark is further to windward. <laughs> yes, that's slightly. right. Slightly. This mark is slightly further to windward. Well, as I started to say. Uh, but so let's. On let's, my scenario, blue is over on the other side of green. He's right here. No, yeah. no, not on, the, on your diagram. No, that's yeah. right. There, now you're okay. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, you've got a different... You're on the next page. We're the same. I'm on four. Yeah. You're upside down. Okay, home. okay. Yeah. So, to me, yellow and blue have better boat speed. Right? Yeah. Get that yeah. clear yellow out. Yellow and blue have better boat speed. Correct. My guess is blue will hit the zone first. Yeah. Yellow will probably continue down and then try to come up. And the question will be... If I'm what, yellow, I'm going to try to reach in. Yep. Right, so exactly. I can gain speed mm -hmm. right. and get the overlap. Uh, Maintain the overlap. I really. don't think there will be an overlap because it looks like blue is much closer to the zone. Right. I think right. there's an overlap <laughs> now, and if he turns up and reaches, he's going to continue to pull ahead. Okay, all right. So, so that I, means he has rights. Yep. And I believe that 
you know, yellow is in the possessed, best position because well, all Blue can do is sail straight downwind Correct. if he wants to go around and that gate. Yellow, yellow will be Blue inside could, and have a proper course to go around. Blue could jive, come over here. That's right, he's trying to do that, like it's we true. just talked about. Right. Which might actually be strategically a good idea for clear air, too. Because, mm -hmm. you know, come up like this, and because okay. they show lines but above sending here. You quickly have a port starboard. So you come yep. up, and then you tack back. So now you're no I mean, stern. No, wait a I'm, the, both these boats are overlap right now. You're assuming that Blue's going to have a much higher boat speed than I they think is practical. It starts to reach for this corner. Well, the downside to what we just talked about is basically what happens is when I tack like this to port, you're going to lose some speed. I now have created this this iffiness with this boat, right? Whether you have an overlap or not. Right, just like room, room, room. Now when he tacks back, did I tack back just at the three boat lengths? Did I tack back, you know, so you create doubt. So if I, just let's just talk yellow and blue. There's very little downside for blue to close this gap and try to break ahead. If blue jibes and can make this cross, mm -hmm. then... He'll have the inside. He'll have the inside. Right. If he doesn't, he's outside just like he was before. before him anyway. Right, that's mm -hmm. true. But now what are you going to say about green? Well, well, let, let's finish blue and yellow. Um, I like yellow's position the best because he's got the clearest air and he has the opportunity to sail up a little bit to get to where he's going. Correct. Mm -hmm. So there's some benefit. I guess part of the reason I put this scenario is in, I think there's some benefit to being wide of the mark. I've seen a lot of our top the sailors do that yeah. too. You get clearer air and you've got that last burst of speed right. you can get. Right. Mm -hmm. Now some of our guys I think overdo it because they go way down and then they come up on a hard uh, start. Start to start. <clears throat> yeah, and let, there's a scenario later about this, but let's um <coughs> let's talk about that. There's a concept of ley line even yeah. in downwind sailing. Correct. And that's as I understand it, it's the the, the line that you would sail to make your best VMG uh, and, and fetch the mark. So if you go past that ley line, you've sailed extra distance and Correct. you're probably going to lose. Yep. But if you know what that ley line is and then just then do, come sail up. to it, that's especially important in, in spinnaker boats, I know. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. So I think yellow's in the best position by virtue of being, you know, in the clear air mm -hmm. and being able to but reach you up. also <coughs> strategically gave yellow a big distance and normally what will happen is a set of boats will be thinking of similar things that's so true. then all of a sudden you're doing this tag yeah, team no matter what though blue has to give yellow room unless he does what we talked about before yeah well, yeah and i so don't think on that side of it, it's going to be to their advantage because you got to watch what green and red are going to try to do well yeah let's, so now let's talk about red and green so they're they're more in the middle. Um, so they're going slower. They're going slower. And they want the well, same side. <coughs> the, well, they don't want the same side, do they? No, the only no. advantage is that this <coughs> is up a little marks bit. a little up a little bit. But I, I took pains to say that it doesn't look <coughs> like either side of the course is, is favored. Right. So, now, so, so if let's, I were red, I'd go over here. Yeah. If I were red, I'd break for this zone. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Right. If I'm green, I break for this zone. Right. Because. I'm looking at this pile of boats behind. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to this zone, there's a very reasonable chance I'm going to get overlapped inside by six boats. Right. Mm -hmm. And even if I go this way and I get overlapped by two, it's not the six over here. Right. I see. Hmm. So I'm I'm making a break for this zone, and you, you know I'm going to be outside of somebody, but I'm minimizing my losses. <coughs> I'm conceding the fact that even though I was ahead when we got here, I'm not going to be ahead there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I have found that um what was it the center and the next i have found that staying out of the crowd like red clearly go that way this guy green maybe even depending on what's what's there you're right but yeah mm -hmm. if there's too many boats coming here i will try to avoid that yeah. mm -hmm. that's what i think I it's That's it's, what I it's very likely that blue number four is going to overlap inside of red by the time red gets to the zone red's job is to not make it four Hmm. Mm -hmm. Wind is eight, so there's a little more wind. Left gate slightly further upwind. For the upwind <coughs> leg, the right side of the course appears favored. 
There's no additional mm -hmm. boats coming down when behind these gray boats. So there's not mm -hmm. another another pack further <clears throat> down, further upwind or down upwind. So now let's see. We got yellow and blue here. <coughs> We've got green there on. Oh, yep. And yep. Now, to me, it's red is favorite. So one well, of the blue is in a great position. Let's. What are the best options for each of these first four boats? Yeah, knowing that you probably want to. Knowing that you probably want to go right. Right. I'm going around right. Okay, let's <coughs> go. Everybody. These two point at the mark and go as fast as you can to get there. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we've got a right hand favor. Because it, it, get, it gets you to clear air fastest. <coughs> so well, if, if, if you say right, you're going to go here. So if we've got you a. You pointed to left. So it's a right hand shift looking uh, upwind. Uh, yeah, he means going up, it's right. Yeah. Okay, all right, got it. <laughs> yeah. so, so, the width, the, the, so our angle upwind is favored to be on starboard. Correct, it is. And turning this way puts you on a beam reach. So these two Sorry, book it that way as I much as you can. And then what? And you might round outside, but get out from under this wind shadow as fast as humanly possible. Why wouldn't you go this way and get out from under? Because I'll, because you're on the because <laughs> you're, you're, you're sucking under all these boats it's from that. And it's going to be slow. That's going to be slow. Well, a well, the idea might be though, if these guys aren't aren't too far outside of this mark. The rest of these guys, that this guy well, goes on out on your diagram. They're they're not. They're yeah. Right. So this guy goes around. He tacks. And he's on the lift attack <clears throat> right away. Air. He's got clear air. Yep. And and all he has to do is get past that next pack of boats, and then and then he's. Yeah. But he's at a clear. He's giving up. All these How, guys. However, he's giving up. He's giving that up. However, this boat that came over here. Even if he so let's play this out. Let's say he's out to here when this mm -hmm. boat. Got there. That's true. Yeah, this boat's way ahead. That's right. Because he's upwind. Yeah, he's, he's going to go through. He's no, it go depends, through. On, depends on the breeze. Yeah, was this a persistent the, shift? Yeah, but right. look at the pack he's got to get through. Yeah. Was, was this well, a persistent shift or was this an, an oscillation? Is this Lake Michigan? Then the answer Beulah. is you have to be here. If you're on Lake Beulah, you can be here and be leading to the next oscillation. And as soon as that shifts here, then you're. You, your goal you flip the yeah. game. Yeah. Ladder rung shift. Right. Yeah, ladder rung shift, but only if it's an oscillation. Right. If you had a cloud bank roll in downwind and it swung right, swung to the right, you have to be there. Mm -hmm. I've just seen that work so many times. Um, yeah, you, 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 you live on Lake Beulah. Beulah. Yes. You live on Lake Beulah where you're going to lead out to the next shift. Right. If you played that game at Eustis or Minnetonka or Oshkosh, you're hosed. Yeah. In spite of the fact that when this guy rounds, if he wants to get on the lift attack, he's got to attack back and go through the path. That's my mm -hmm. point, yeah. Well, I, I, I wait further. a little bit. I go out a little yeah. further. <coughs> so so let, let, let the pack. let's just play this diagram through. By the time this boat rounds here, these boats are here. Yeah. There's nobody to sail through. Right. Because you said there's nobody behind those you boats. You said there's nobody behind these boats. Correct. So if he gets to here, they're in line here. There's nobody to sail through. You're free yeah, and clear. That's true. So if you're yellow coming in, and let's say that you're the first boat around, you jive, <coughs> you, go, you go as far you as you need to, to tack get above. to get yeah. above. Right. Yep. Exactly. Or, or if there's a gap, I would go below one or two boats mm -hmm. in that gap. To get them, get, get as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't go through the pack, no. but I, I go underneath one or two wind shadows to be on that lift and tack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Depending on what kind of boats we're in. If we're in an MC, I'll take those wind shadows. If we're in an A scow, no way. Because you got spinnaker. Yeah, as soon as the spinnaker's there, go under the spinnaker, the gas mask drop out of the boom, game over. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, any other comments on this one? Okay, wind is eight miles an hour. The gate is square to the wind. For the upwind leg, the right side of the course appears favored. Yellow is dis leading and decides to round the left gate looking downwind. In other words, this one. After yellow rounds, how should he respond to the various actions of blue, red, and green? That's, That's the first question. I think. Okay. So yellow's going to round, and he's going to go off. 
He's over here. I'll probably stay on the, uh, the starter. I think it depends upon whether it's the last leg to the finish. Let's These say guys it's are the last leg here. to the finish. Okay. Yeah, so let's say that those guys do that. Last leg to the finish? Last leg to the finish. And I would go until you this watch board that guy. tax. See what he does, yeah. Especially if it's favorite to the right. So the wind's coming straight, so. The wind's coming straight, but he thinks he sees more wind on the right. Okay, so then it looks he like it's continue favorite. on his starboard then. So, so you do this because you just want to be able to control, once that guy tacks, you want to be able control to. Control blue. Yeah. Even if you think there's wind up there, I think. Yeah. So I think you need some context. Okay. What do you need for, who do you need to what beat in the rats? series? Oh. Well, that too. I mean, that that's. If, uh, if that's, that's the last race of the series. Or, 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 yeah. even, or even if it's early in the series and you know who, you, I mean, you, you, sort, to, you sort of know who's going to be up front. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're going upwind and you're coming around second, but if it's somebody who's going to be, the boat you're racing with for the series, and somebody's having a race that's way above par, mm -hmm. you know, you know I, rather, I would go with the guy who I know is close uh, to me in the series, because that's what's important to my scoreline. You know, doesn't matter where in the series we are, if I know my crowd, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to let the guy who's sailing way above his average yeah. go, and I'm going to stay stick with this guy. Yeah. One of the things, one of your options... Let's get rid of these, though. They're, they're sort of in the way here. One of your options, as you round... You might have to sail through them. Is yeah, but what, they're out there. What I've heard referred to as the Buddy Melgus drill is if you have a fairly large lead, come around the mark. As soon as you pe cross paths with this guy, yeah. you tack. And when he rounds, you tack back. Now you have 100% control mm -hmm. because you're straight up wind. He can't get any leverage on you either way. Mm -hmm. And you've burned two tacks worth of your lead, so you need to be conscious of what that means to your overall gap in your race. Right, right. And whether you're giving these guys an opportunity to yep. challenge you. Yep, and again, we're talking about context in the series, but if I need to be with that guy, I immediately come and tack, look for, look for my gap with the rest of the pack. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I have an opportunity to get across, I'm going to get across to the side of the guy I need to protect if he split with me. Mm-hmm. And the other ancillary benefit is if somebody's having a race far above par and you've let them go, it's not a bad thing that they got the big flyer and won the race yeah. because that's the kind of thing that keeps people really excited about sailing. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. <clears throat> now, is the strategy different if it's not to the finish? Then what do you do? Then do you, you go off thinking that you're, you might get the lift on this side more or just kind of? I mean, it's a, it, it's an odds game. Yeah. You know. How, yeah. You know, can I extend my lead or am I? You know, what's my odds of falling back in? Am I confident that I can gain it back? Yeah, mm -hmm. I would say it depends on your confidence that you think this is favored and, and why you think it is. And, and yeah. You still well, and if it's beautiful too, because you just can't go so far. You yeah. Know? Right. Well, and, and how confident are you, and what's the what what are your averages? Mm -hmm. You know, if right. you're if you're out in the lead. You probably did something right. You're hot today. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. going away from what you think is right isn't necessarily a great plan if you've been hot all day. Mm -hmm. Blue is not entitled to mark room. Uh, yet the thing about this one is, yellow's headed for a very tight rounding. So it looks like she's going to pass close to the mark, and and you know do one of these, mm -hmm. which usually means that it's going to be slower because she's got to jam the tiller right over and you know it's not going to be great so the question is you're always told to go behind this person because then you can be on their transom when they round correct yeah and you might be able to get inside of them right well but the question is would it, it, it are there cases in which it in which you think this guy's going to have a slow rounding in which you go ahead and you pinwheel around him? Yeah, you, I, I believe you'd have to be here. To make that work? Yep. Yeah. And he gets to sail to the mark. You have to have a few feet between you and make that his choice to sail there because he can very easily make the case that you didn't give him room to sail to the mark. Oh, and so make he has room to... He, he has you got to right. make sure you, you give him enough room. In other words. You have right. to make him, give him enough room that it's not 
that he's not two inches away when you get to here. Okay. He needs to be able to make a seaman-like rounding, not a tactical rounding. Yeah. But he needs to be able to turn so much that he's not cavitating his rudder as he goes. Mm -hmm. So, if he's made that mistake and is going close, you can go wide. And turn. even even if he turns really tight and he's slow, <coughs> if you come in and leave yourself the out to spin the tack with speed, mm -hmm. you've done pretty well for yourself. Mm -hmm. Or you could also, if he's really slow and blows the rounding, you might be able just to foot off behind right through. But I think you have to be bow ahead to pull that off. Hmm. You know, if you're, any, yeah. if you're even yeah. or bow behind, yeah. you need to be in a following position. If you're bow ahead and you're confident in your rounding skills, you can, you know, half, half bow ahead, you can certainly at least come out even and have a drag race on the back on the back side of the mark. Mm -hmm. And again, it has to do with who blue is. It, yeah, who the inside boat is, right? Yep. But assume assume you're equal. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to have a good a good judge that you can come out at least bow even mm -hmm. and start a drag race. We have an eight mile an hour wind. Faster. Gates currently square to the wind. I'm not showing the actual wind on the on the diagram. Let's just say that they all jived, they, they jived from that end. Okay. And that uh, because the wind it, shifted. It was apparently that because the wind shifted. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the idea. So now the question I'm trying to get to is, yellow's sort of committed there. Okay. Does he does he take advantage of that knowledge and and change his mind? So, so, so let's start, let's back this up a little bit. Yeah. All these boats started to jibe. I asked the question, who jibed first? What did you have to be doing as blue to be able to make this call? Looking back. You had to be looking back and paying very, very close attention. Because if you're you looking forward, getting ready for your mark rounding, and you look back and see every boat has jibed, you don't have any don't context. Have context right. right. Because if blue two jibed first and forced everybody to jibe, that wasn't necessarily a shift, that was, I took starboard advantage, yeah, to forced the whole pack to jibe. Maybe I had a lefty and I'm forcing everybody to that gate so I can break for it. Mm -hmm. Or righty looking upwind. Okay. So, you need to be very, very conscious of what the whole pack is doing behind you and what those positions are to judge mm -hmm. what that meant. Alright, let's suppose that it meant a shift to the, to the left looking upwind and that you're yellow and you're trying to decide, well, shoot, I've already sort of committed here. I don't feel like changing what I'm doing, but is that, you know, and I, I'm sure it depends on some things, but what would make you think about jiving as yellow? I've done the opposite that. and lived to regret it. <coughs> Why would you do that as yellow? Because it's a righty. No, no it's, it's a, a lefty. It's, lefty. it's shifting. Lefty looking upwind if everybody jived to starboard. Okay. Right. Yeah. I've when done... you're looking upwind, it's a righty. Right? It's over here. No, These it's, are it's all shifting no, to a lefty. No, no. Am I it's backwards? Lefty. You are backwards. Yep. Yeah. So lefty. So No, I'm backwards. not. So you were square. We're all like this. Yep. And then they all jibed. They all jibed to starboard. They all jibed. No. To starboard. His the the description is. is before the, the oh, this is before they all jibed. Yes. yes. <clears throat> oh, I thought they all jibed to port. No. No, they all jibed to starboard. Right. That was why we all reached over and turned the sails. So the point I was I making is that I've done the line yellow line. stay your course. <laughs> All right, say it again now. So I've done the yellow stay your course because, you know, I'm, I'm worried about boat speed. I'm worried about getting covered by all these guys. And I've had my head handed to me because the advantage of having that lift and all that can be significant. But it's about how close they are to you. It matters a lot because if I can't get there cleanly, then, I, then I'm screwed. Mm -hmm. But if I lose a whole ladder rung, that can be a big problem too. So you're judging those two things. So the way I see it, you, looking back, you should have seen a puff building in. Because that shift came with a puff. And as soon as it hit the furthest boat back, how did that boat respond, either in course or jibing? Helps me make that decision what I'm doing way before the whole pack flipped. But that's also prior to the scene. <coughs> That's prior to the scene, so you had to right. think further ahead. But so let's now say you're at you this, haven't, you're now, now you're at here the scene. and this happens. You have two choices. You can break over, be behind two. The other thing you can do is ride this out because the shift isn't to you yet. Round this mark, tack, and right. as you get to this pack, 
then hope, pack in the ship. Hope that they've carried the puff, and you can tack under the pack and catch the shift. Yeah. This guy is probably here mm -hmm. at that point in time. Right, right. <clears throat> but <clears throat> so is that, you know, you can make that a break even with I bailed late and went there. Right. But you need to be very active and make sure you can and judge can I get can I tack, get to the shift and not sail through this pack of boats. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're still upwind of red. So one of the things I was worried about is how do I know when I've gone past in, in an MC when I've gone past the ley line to this mark, and I'm already sailed extra distance, and then it's probably I'm losing, I'm losing some distance by trying to go back there. Well, you're, no matter what, you're losing distance if you're this far into it. But yeah. am I going to lose less distance going there and catching the shift? Yeah, you do have the advantage of being on a reef, so yeah. you're going to be. Or fast. think about the different distance between two gates versus the distance you're going to lose on that whole lift. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, and, you could lose a lot. And, and again, what body of water are we on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is very, very important. And what have, you seen, what have you seen yeah, the rest of the day? It's going to shift again. It, yeah. It's going to come out of here in five minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and can I come this way and, you know, maybe take a little hitch, and I'm going to hook into this lefty, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be able to, okay, this guy's a little bow ahead, but the next shift comes and I'm at yeah. broken even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If this is big water and that's a persistent shift that came with a cloud line, uh, it got sunnier. I knew the forecast was that we were having a frontal system come through today. Mm -hmm. I'm far more likely to, to bail. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, interesting. <clears throat>